1 John chapter 2, verse 6 says this. He who says he abides in him. Let's read this together. This is too good not to read together. He who says Jesus abides in me ought himself also to walk just as Jesus walked. It's, a, it's about the image that we were created in. This is my favorite part. I said, that was the introduction. <laughs> this, is the, this is the message right here. You ready? This is Jesus, Matthew chapter 11, verse 27. Jesus says this, all things, say that with me, all have been handed over to me by my Father. And no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. And then He says, He says the same thing that's said in Deuteronomy. Come to me. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Teach you, I teach you all the time that Jesus, the Father, says, you do this, I'll do this. I, I, I really, you, you got to get it. You got to get it right here. You got to get it right here. You do this, and I'll do this. See, what we do is we pray, God, do this. God, do this. God, do this. And God is sitting back saying, you do this, and I'll do this. If you if you'll respond this way, I'll do this. It'll bear fruit. You do this, I'll do this. And all we got to do is just make a decision that we, we love him. And then we, we want to submit to kingdom. We want kingdom. That's all we got to do. God, I want kingdom. I want it to happen in my life. I want to quit resisting. I want to quit ignoring. I want to I wanna quit feeling sorry for myself. I, I, actually, I actually believe that there's power that is in me that I can have victory if I'll just quit resisting. And so he says, number one, in verse 28, you need to see it. Verse 28, if we got that, Lee. No, that's 29, there it is. The first thing you have to do, he says, he says what? Come to me. That's you. And he says, all you labor in heaven, is that you? Yeah, that's me. And what will he do? What do you got to do? And he'll give you rest. What do you got to do? Come to him. All right, let's go on. Take. What do you got to do next? You got to come. You got to take his yoke. You got you to say, hey, I'm going to follow you. Going back to Deuteronomy, we just had a few weeks ago, I, 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 wanna, I want your way. I want to do things your way. I'm going to take on your yoke, God. He says, take my yoke. Take how I think. Take what I do. Take the revelation I give you and I reveal to you. Take that upon you and learn from me. What do he say about the king? He said, the king, he wants the king. Get in my word. What? So you can learn to fear me. You got to learn. You're not there. I'm not there. We're not there. We have revelation from God as the Spirit reveals it in our struggles. And there's a great cloud of witnesses watching us to see how we respond to the promises of God. They're saying to us, look. They've got opportunity to walk in the Spirit. Look, let's, let's see the power of God bring glory to that situation, no matter how hard, as they, as they come to Jesus and as they take the yoke. Let's keep going. Let's go back to take the yoke. Take my yoke upon you. Learn from me, for I'm gentle and humble in heart, and you will find Rest for your mind, your will, and your emotions. You'll find rest for your souls, and you will prosper as your soul prospers. Now, here's the hard part. This is the hard part. He didn't make you. He didn't make you. 
the promises don't come true just because you acknowledge God. The promises come, come true. The, the promises are revealed as you come to him, as you take his yoke, as you learn from him. He'll walk you through and you'll begin to see the promises begin to accumulate in your life. And it doesn't look like anybody else. And Jeremiah, and I did this from the New Living, I, I almost wish I could have, I, I as a matter of fact, I'll go to Jeremiah chapter 6, maybe. I'm going to get it in New King James just so I can give you something else. It says this, this is what the Lord says. You want to know the Lord's will for you? Stop at the crossroads and look around. Ask for the old godly way and walk in it. Nothing's changed, y'all. Nothing's changed. Travel its path, take on his yoke, and you will find rest for your souls. It's Jeremiah. Come on. It's Old Testament. But the church replied, no, that's not the road we want to take. You don't necessarily have to say that with your voice. An absence of doing is saying it. Let me read it here. Thus says the Lord, stand in the ways of God and seek and ask for the old paths where the good way is and walk in that. Then you will find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not do it. So there's, a, there's an opportunity for you and me every day, not only to get in the Word of God, but to recognize that we're the temple of the Holy Spirit and that the, and that the Spirit of God doesn't have a bad day. The Spirit of God leads you into righteousness. And there's a dependence on, on God. There's a trust. There's a fear of the Lord that says, I can't do this day without God. Nor do I want to because it won't be good. Because no matter whether God leads me by his spirit with revelation of the word and I walk in kingdom or I wake up in the morning and I don't invite God into anything and I begin to do the day in the flesh, it will bear fruit. It'll bear fruit. It's going to reap something. What do you want to reap? And God says to me and you, I want you to reap kingdom. I want you to reap my image and my likeness. That's why I opened up the Holy of Holies and said you can come boldly to the throne of grace where you'll find help in your time of need.